Three months ago, I compared Nova Launcher with Launcher 2, and a lot of people seem to like that video. So today I will make another launcher comparison, this time with Hyperion Launcher, and we're going to see which is the better option. This is the full comparison between Nova Launcher and Hyperion Launcher. By the way, if you want to watch my videos in Spanish, be sure to check out my second channel called How To Men In Español. I'll include the link in the description. Starting with the accessibility, both of these can be downloaded off the Play Store for free. However, they also include a premium version to unlock all the pro features. Hyperion Supreme costs $1.99, while Nova Launcher Prime is a bit more pricey at $4.99. Interesting price difference, both of which let you unlock various features within the app, including gesture support, hiding apps, custom launcher fonts, etc. Those premium features could be a make it or break it deal, so it's definitely worth pointing out. Now, as I said before in the previous episode, people who download Nova Launcher are either only downloading it because it's popular or because it's considered by most to be the best option for customizing your home screen. On the other hand, Hyperion Launcher is a relatively new competitor, around two years old, so it doesn't have as many installs. It has around 500,000, which is still a lot, but it's nothing crazy as 50 million, which Nova Launcher has. Since it was released back in 2011, it had some time to grow those numbers. But anyways, people who download Hyperion Launcher are usually looking for something a bit more refreshing with unique features. Still, keep in mind that Nova developers are a bit more active in providing more frequent updates mostly security or bug fixes. It seems like they've reached a point where they aren't really trying to experiment with any new crazy features. Hyperion Launcher on the other hand is more likely to do so since its audience isn't as big and it's still relatively new. But up until this month, they've actually been inactive for a really long time. So hopefully this is their comeback here. Now, before I jump straight into the feature comparisons of each launcher, I wanted to give a shout out to Revolut for sponsoring this video. Revolut is a personal finance app that does a much better job of managing your money anywhere in the world. Think of it as a digital banking alternative. When you sign up, they ship you a free contactless debit card like the one I have here. Or you can get a custom colored premium card which comes with some exclusive features that I'll talk about in a second. They also have a fully metal contactless card for those outside of the United States. Pretty fancy. Plus this contactless card is perfect for this pandemic since you don't even need to touch a terminal when you pay. Some other impressive features are that you can spend and transfer money abroad without any rubbish rates. You can hold and exchange currencies with excellent rates, including cryptocurrency. In the app, you can instantly transfer money to your friends, split a bill easily, schedule recurring payments, and monitor your expenses and budget month by month within the app. With that premium card I was talking about earlier, you also get worldwide travel insurance, access to airport lounges worldwide, unlimited foreign exchange, and a lot more. All of these features and more built into one well-designed, easy-to-use application. So get yourself a free Revolut Standard Card when you sign up using my referral link in the description. So let's break down what exactly you get with each launcher. When you boot up Nova Launcher for the first time, it enables you to customize a basic layout real easily, which is a nice start for the average Joe. If you already have a Nova Settings backup file from another phone, you can easily drop that in when you tap on Browse. Otherwise, you'll have to start fresh, selecting your preferred theme and the app drawer style. Hyperion Launcher doesn't really have an initial setup process. It just has a neat animation of their logo and then asks you to enable the storage permission. After that, it'll toss you straight into the home screen. It's a more abrupt process since it's making you figure things out on your own, but it's not a big deal since once you jump into the settings, you'll see how well organized everything is. Unlike Nova Launcher, which has all of its menus clustered together, Hyperion breaks up each section into categories so you can quickly find something you're looking for. Plus the settings interface within Hyperion just looks a lot less intimidating and a bit more modern. For example, if you want to customize the icons or the accent color, those options are both in the theming section. If you like to customize the grid layout, that's in the layout section, very straightforward. Now both launchers have the basics such as custom grid layout support for both the desktop and app drawer, a dock, icon pack support, a dark theme, accent colors, the option to lock the desktop, scrolling wallpaper, integrations including the Google Discover panel and Sesame Shortcuts, backup and restore, and a lot more. Anyways, let's start with Nova Launcher and see what features it includes that Hyperion doesn't or just does better. The first one is when you launch an app or return to the home screen, Nova Launcher has more options for changing the app's animation. Hyperion also lets you change the app launch animation, but it only includes one option. Nova Launcher also has a lot more transition effects for the home screen. You can add an option within the pop-up menu when long pressing an app to quickly relaunch it just in case the app isn't working properly. 
Nova Launcher lets you customize the search bar immensely within the app drawer and home screen. You can even replace it entirely if it's in the dock with another 4x1 widget like a KWGT widget. Hyperion on the other hand only allows you to customize the icons and local search providers. For the folders, you can customize it a lot better including the window style, transition when opening it, the icon folder appearance, and you can even add a swipe up action to it. So for example, I can swipe up on a folder and it can launch a random task or application. Both apps have really great gesture support with similar amounts of actions, but Nova Launcher does have more gestures to choose from and also supports app shortcuts. Hyperion is also missing a really meaningful gesture that I'd love to use. It's the pinch in gesture. It's a great way to bring up the page previews of the home screen, so kind of a bummer that it's missing on Hyperion. And the last feature that I wish Hyperion had, and this also goes for Launcher 2, is the ability to add blank pages. Once in a while, I like to take in my wallpaper without having any icons or widgets to distract me, and the best way to do so is with a blank page to the far right. Or when using a KWLP file, you need blank pages. Switching it over to Hyperion Launcher, a lot of these exclusive features are pretty creative and unique, which is why so many people love using this launcher over the competition. First off, there is custom font support, so you can legit download any font file from the web and use it as the font within this launcher. You can lock apps using your fingerprint or the face unlock feature if you have a Pixel 4. When you long press on an app, the pop-up menu will show up and you can tap on the eye icon to bring up even more information about the app, including version number, where it was updated from, etc. and you can uninstall it straight from within this menu. Nova Launcher also lets you uninstall from the home screen, but it doesn't include a custom app info menu. Another unique option is that you can add two rows of apps in the dock, and if you combine that with multiple dock pages, you can have a staggering amount of apps in the dock. However, the two row dock feature is only in the premium version. Since this launcher is based on the Pixel Launcher, it comes with an at a glance widget, which is really customizable. Plus you can show it below the dock on the home screen, and you can add a ton more options for the long press menu on the home screen. Those are the most significant differences between each launcher. They both have a lot of the same features, but I didn't want to mention every single one, otherwise this video would be really long and tedious. From what I can tell after looking at the differences is that Nova Launcher has most of the same features that Hyperion has, but it implements most of them a whole lot better by allowing you to customize them a lot more. To me, Hyperion Launcher has a better selection of unique features that you won't find on any other launcher, and it's also a bit more straightforward to use. If I had to choose which one to go with, it would have to be Nova Launcher just because it's a lot more reliable for customization. For example, it has a higher desktop grid of 12x12, Hyperion only goes up to 10x10. Nova Launcher also supports blank pages, which is perfect for KWLP wallpapers. And I have experienced a lot more bugs within Hyperion, such as the search function within the settings not working sometimes, or when I change something within the home screen settings, it sometimes doesn't immediately apply the modification. I need to force stop it to get it to work. Obviously, I'm nitpicking at this point because both of these launchers are really amazing, but I do still think the Hyperion launcher does have some work to do to take the lead as the better launcher here. Either way, that's a quick comparison between Nova Launcher and Hyperion Launcher. I'll leave both links in the description. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a huge thumbs up, get subscribed with the notification bell turned on. Don't forget to check out my second channel, How To Men in Espanol. And thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!